Hello YouTube, Stuck in a Pool here with some more Fire Emblem Heroes stuff for you. So given how prevalent armored units are in the arena, along with how much intelligence system seems to be pushing out new armored units, I felt like it would be a good time to discuss the armor skills and talk a bit about some build types that utilize them. So the specific thing that I want to talk about today is how to make the best use out of the armor exclusive skills. So our four skills that are exclusive to armored units are Wary Fighter, Vengeful Fighter, Bold Fighter, and Armor March. But I'm kind of going to couple together armored boots with armored march since they do essentially the same thing. So for each skill I'm going to talk about two play styles using the skill and mention some skills you might want to bundle along with it. Uh, then I'm going to apply the skill set to a character and talk about using them a little bit. So our first skill is Wary Fighter. Now at max rank, Wary Fighter prevents both the unit and any enemy in combat from performing a follow-up attack, so long as the unit using it has 50% or more HP. Units that come with it in their base kits are Effie, Zephiel, Halloween Jacob, Winter Crom, and Valentine's Hector. Typically, units that want this skill want it as protection to prevent being doubled because they tend to be very slow. The first type of use for Wary Fighter that I'll talk about is really its quote intended use, which is to help armor units tank and survive better. This is really signified by the units that naturally have it. Uh, this unit type has really high defense, or even good mixed defenses, and can just sit back and block off enemies to help out their more fragile allies. Uh, since their weakness is that they'll often get doubled, this helps them stay alive and take hits from more enemies. Uh, with the help of a healer, their survivability pretty much goes through the roof. So as for a weapon choice, slang is kind of the ideal choice, uh, silver is okay, and then you have spring weapons are an interesting choice that would synergize really well with the HP threshold. As for specials, bonfire and iceberg are kind of no-brainers. Uh, this is actually a good place for soul or noontime, which usually don't see a lot of use, again, the HP threshold, or even aether if you're using a slang weapon along with like steady breath or something like that. As for your passive skills, things like fortress defense or resistance are good here since, like I said, these units might have lower attack and their defenses are a little higher so they don't really mind. Dip it, letting their attack dip a little lower, it'll help their specials more and help them survive better. Then you can go with skills like close defense, distant defense, uh, steady or wary stance, or steady or wary breath, or even just flat stat boosts are good. As for the C slot, we can look at skills like threat attack, or attack ploy if you have the res for it, or attack smoke or ward armor if you're going to be stacking armors, or panic ploy since armors tend to have pretty high health, or if you're worried about a specific unit or weapon type then you could always go with deflect skills. So the unit that I'm going to talk about here is, shouldn't be surprising is Sheena. Uh, so Sheena has really good mixed defenses. Uh, she would really like this to counter, that's the way I have her built, but this build is mostly just for fighting melee units. So with Steady Breath, she can charge Aether in two fights. She has the res to use Attack Ploy, which along with Close and Distant Defense will give her up to 47 and 48 uh, defense and resistance if she's able to uh, activate her ploy. So now the second common use of Wary Fighter is to pair it with a Brave Weapon so that the unit can pretty much ignore the speed penalty altogether and then bait in any unit safely and then on player phase retaliate with a really hard hitting double. One thing about these units though is they do have to have the high attack to really take advantage of it. Uh, most units with Brave Weapons are kind of scared to get engaged on but with Wary Fighter these units don't have to worry about it. So as for weapon obviously you know Brave Weapon. Uh, as for the special Glimmer is actually probably one of the best ideas. Uh, Moonbow is good. Luna is good, uh, it's not guaranteed if your unit can't counter when an enemy engages on them, unless you're using like Heavy Blade or something. As for passives, Death Blow is the ideal, if not, you know, just a flat attack boost is okay, Fury is okay, Threat and Defense is probably the best C skill, if Defense Smoke was a thing that would be perfect, but it's not yet. Defense Ploy, if you have the resistance for it, but most of these units aren't going to have high resistance, so probably not. Panic Ploy is really good, they'll probably have pretty high HP so they can get that off. And I mentioned Heavy Blade, that would help them activate their higher cooldown specials and since, since these units tend to have pretty high tech, they can make pretty good use of it. So the unit that I mentioned here, uh, another kind of no-brainer uh, is Effie. Uh, this build is about as old as Skill Inheritance is, just give her a Brave Lance, um, she can bait in units with her pretty good defenses. Uh, she'll sacred hit, and then with her sky high attack, she'll just destroy them on player phase. And if you give her threat and defense, it's just even easier. And I want to, as kind of a side note, I'll mention a third type here, just because it's it's kind of an outlier. Uh, you probably heard of it. It's the Hector build. You give him Warrior Fighter, and you give him the the quicker post seal, and it came, kind of becomes an Omni Breaker Hector because the Warrior Fighter keeps the enemy from getting two attacks or from getting a follow up attack, but 
it only cancels out one of his quicker post effects from his weapon and his seal, so he gets a guaranteed follow-up attack on enemy phase. So basically, it's a breaker effect, but against everything, as long as he meets the HP threshold, which is kind of nuts. So, our next skill is Vengeful Fighter. Now, at max rank, Vengeful Fighter allows the unit to have a guaranteed follow-up when they're attacked, so long as they have at least 50% HP. They also receive an extra cooldown charge per counterattack that they make, not when the enemy hits them. Units that come with it in their base kits are Winter Tharja and Fallen Robin or Grima. This is basically a beefed up quicker post that strengthens armor's enemy phases up even more and helps them to charge their specials quicker, which is especially helpful for armors. So there's a little bit less diversity in the types of unit builds running Vengeful Fighter since really all the, they just want to get engaged on and do all of their damage in the enemy phase. So I'll be splitting it up basically by stats. So the first type is basically the unit that is quick enough to usually avoid doubles. So they have to use lower charge specials like Bonfire or Iceberg. They may not have as high defenses, but they're a lot less likely to be doubled, so that makes them a little safer. So as for your weapon choice, slang is kind of the ideal choice here too. Uh, distant counter weapons are great, of course. You know, you have like Black Knight. Since he has Black Luna, he's probably honestly one of the good choices for a vengeful fighter. He's got the speed not to get doubled that much, but he'll, you know, he may not double without the help of vengeful fighter, and he'll get that automatic Black Luna proc. Uh, anyway, specials. Ignis and Glacies are your choices if you're using a slang weapon, if not Bonfire or Iceberg. As for your passive skills, Distant Counter and Close Counter, like I said, having the, one of those would be great since those are you know your premier enemy phase skills. Close Defense and Distant Defense are good, uh, any stance is good, Fortresses are okay, Fury is okay but it will kind of hurt with the Vengeful Fighter HP threshold. Threatens are okay, a little less valuable here, a little harder to proc unless you just sit your ally in enemy range and they're close enough for the threaten. Panic ploy is really good here. Other ploys aren't really as viable. I only say that because most of the fast armors, except for the mage armors, have pretty low resistance. So, you know, running a ploy on them is only good if you are running, of course, a unit with good resistance. So our unit here that I'll mention is Amelia. So Amelia, th this is a pseudo budget build. I gave her fortress defense. Obviously steady breath would be good, distant counter would be good. Uh, I would go with Fury, like I said, but it does kind of have a, it doesn't go well with Vengeful Fighter. A stance skill is really good, such as, you know, steady stance. Amelia's resistance is honestly pretty low, so she mostly wants to fight physical units, so it's probably better to just cater to her defenses. Uh, the guaranteed Ignis proc is pretty much a guaranteed kill as long as she's fighting a melee unit. Now our other type of use for Vengeful Fighter is much more common. Uh, it's the unit that not only has the defenses that they don't care about getting doubled, but they actually often want to get doubled because they want to charge up their special immediately. They also rely on their special for doing more meaningful damage and to heal up. So as for weapon choices, uh, slaying, again, great idea. I didn't mention this before, but the winter weapons are actually a really good choice for using Vengeful Fighter since, you're, like you said, you're wanting to get engaged on all the time. As for specials, if you're using a slaying weapon, Aether is your go-to. Is you're probably If you get doubled, then you're going to have four charges by the time your second hit comes around and Aether will be ready. If you're not using a slaying weapon, then just go with Ignis or Glacies. As for your passives, basically you can pick the same options as I mentioned before with Vengeful Fighter with that first play style, but the only difference is these armors, they might have higher resistance, so ploys might be a little more reliable, and they can sustain a little better if they're running Aether, so they can kind of stay in the fight a little longer and keep more enemies around them, so Threatens are probably a bit more viable, as well as Smokes. So the unit that we'll showcase here is Gwendolyn. So Gwendolyn, this Gwendolyn is a really good mixed tank, uh, she is guaranteed to proc Aether unless her opponent is just you know, pretty slow. A combination of her resistance refined lance and distant counter and distant defense means that she can take care of most mages without much issue. So our third skill is, of course, Bold Fighter. Now at max rank, Bold Fighter allows the unit to have a guaranteed follow-up attack whenever they initiate combat, regardless of any HP threshold. It also provides one extra cooldown charge when this unit strikes an enemy on player phase. Units that come with it in their basic hits are Harden and Winter Lissa. Now, in a similar way that Very Fighter is like a better quicker post, Bold Fighter is like a better Brash Assault. Since it was introduced, though, it has always felt like an odd skill to me since armors have a hard time engaging thanks to their low movement, especially melee armors. So that being said, I personally think that ranged armors typically make a little better use of Bold Fighter. So like Vengeful Fighter being all about enemy phase, the nature of Bold Fighter being all about player phase is somewhat limiting to the diversity of the builds. 
The first type of build I'll talk about is basically just an all-out player phase build similar to what you would see with a brave weapon. The best option is to use death blow and just hope to dish out a ton of damage. These units are going to need some help getting around properly to engage though. Uh, they don't have to worry about having enough speed to double anyone, but not getting doubled in return would be helpful. As I said, ranged armors can engage a bit easier, so I personally think there are stronger picks here. So weapon choice, again, slaying weapons are pretty much ideal, especially you know with Bold Fighter and Vengeful Fighter with their cooldown reduction, that stacking with the slaying weapon you know, overall minus one to the special is really good. As for your specials, you're pretty safe with Bonfire Iceberg, but if you want a guaranteed proc, go with Glimmer and Moonbow. As for passives, like I said, this is kind of like a Brave build, so we'll go with Death Blow, or even just Attack Plus, or, you know, Fury will help keep you a little safer, but you'll take that chip damage. For this build, I would say Brazen's a good choice too, since, you know, with the other ones, taking damage isn't a good idea because of the HP threshold, but both fighters doesn't have that, so Brazen's are a little better option here. Ploys are good, again, if you have the resistance for it. Uh, panic Ploy, most armors can run that since since our HP is pretty good. Attack and Speed Smoke are actually pretty good options, I would say, here, since you do kind of have to overextend and kind of, you know, go out and engage. So that way, if, you know, you are in range of other enemies after you do that, if you debuff them with the smoke, you're less likely to run into trouble on enemy phase. And then, of course, uh, I'm going to talk about these later, but Armor March and Armor Boots are probably one of the best synergizing skills with bold fighter since like i said armors have a hard time engaging so that extra movement is going to go a long way so the unit i'll talk about now is halloween henry so henry he could run a raven or a blade tome pretty well but i, I feel like green mages seem prefer seem to prefer raven tomes just given our current meta his resistance is pretty high so he can run a ploy skill a resistance ploy will help him to soften up his enemies and make it you know they'll take a little more damage he comes with Armored March, but we're, we're going to give him Ploy, like I said, and we'll just give him the Armored Boots Seal. And I thought about having Lin here, but Lin trades a little bit of resistance for a little more speed. And since speed doesn't really matter too much with Bold Fighter, since Henry's speed is still going to be pretty good to avoid doubles, I think he's a little better user of it. So our second Bold Fighter set, this is a different set, it's a little more unique. Uh, this build became doable with the introduction of the Quicker Post Seal. So this is basically a dual phase set. This set combines Bold Fighter with Quicker Post so that no matter which phase, you, your unit will get a guaranteed follow-up attack. Of course, you know, you have to worry about the Quicker Post HP threshold on enemy phase. Overall, player phase will win out thanks to the cooldown reduction of Bold Fighter. Skill choices outside of the B and S slot can be varied depending on availability and which phase you want to beef up more. So as for your weapon, slaying, obviously, you know, I sound like, like a broken record, but slaying weapon is still a good choice for both phases. Uh, silver is good if you're focusing more on enemy phase, Christmas weapons are fine. As for your special, Gloom, Glimmer and Moonbow are still the safest. Bonfire and Iceberg are good, you'll probably still get them off. As for your passes, this depends a lot on which phase you want to beef up more, like I said. If you're looking for player phase strength, see the skills I mentioned for Bold Fighter before and for the Brave Wary Fighter build. If you're looking at enemy phase skills, look at what I mentioned for Wary Fighter. Unless you're Hector, your seal is going to be quicker post, so really you just need to pick an A and a C slot skill to complement your build, so this is very much up to you. The unit I'll mention here is Zelgis. Uh, like I said, Hector could run this build easily and keep his S slot open, but let's talk about someone else. So with this, Zelgis is super dangerous on both phases thanks to always being able to activate Black Luna unless guard's part of the equation. So that plus his good speed and built-in distant counter means he can take on just about anyone pretty safely. I have Armored March on him, it isn't required, but like I said with Bold Fighter, it's a good idea. Speaking of Armored March, our last skill is Armored March, or Boots. So Armored March allows an armored unit to grant themselves and any adjacent armored allies movement plus one at the start of player phase, so long as the user is actually touching an armored unit. So at max rank, there is no HP requirement for this skill to activate. Now its cousin, Sacred Seal, Armored Boots, allows the unit using it to have an extra movement if they're at 100% HP, but it has no effect on allies. It also doesn't stack with any other movement increasing abilities such as Armor March. So Armor March comes in the base kits of Amelia, Halloween Henry, Winter Robin, and Valentine's Lynn. And then Armor Boots is a seal, either you got it in the Tempest Trial or you forged it later. I'll be a bit more brief here when talking about these skills because they kinda, the discussion here fits in a lot with the builds I've already mentioned, especially Bold Fighter. 
So our first kind of skill set uh, and the most common obvious use of these skills is to help offensively oriented units to engage more easily. Armored units are good at just letting enemies come to them, but with armor, march, and boots they can actually close the distance themselves and utilize player phase skill sets a little easier without having to basically force the enemy to come to them and soak in that first attack and then retaliate on the next phase. Your weapon of choice kind of depends on your build. Slaying and brave weapons are probably two of the most common choices. Uh, your special should be a low cooldown unless you're utilizing a skill like Heavy Blade. As for your passives, Bold Fighter, like I said, is going to be the best friend of Armor Merchant Boots, at least in my opinion. Because of this, essentially all the skills I mentioned that synergize well with Bold Fighter are going to be good picks here. Wary Fighter Brave builds are also good fits for Armor Merchant Boots. Aside from that, I would just look at player phase skills and seals like Heavy Blade or even Quick and Pulse. And of course, special skills like Arden's Follow Up Ring are also a nice fit. So let's talk about him. So Arden's base kit of his Brave Sword and his Follow Up Ring, it works really well on player phase, but he needs a little bit of help with the armor march slash boots to engage. He'd like to keep his S slot open for an attack boost. Fire boost is probably the absolute best option with his high HP, but since this is such a player phase oriented build, death blow is good too. And of course the nice thing about his follow up ring is that he doesn't really mind taking a hit on enemy phase, but like I said before, if you go with the boots or the march, then he's going to be able to not have to worry about that if he doesn't have to. His player phase is still better. so. And then our last skill set of this video uh, is, again, using Armor March. This is probably the least considered type of armor build that I mentioned, and it is a support armor. Uh, so basically being able to move two spaces can allow your armored unit to reposition, so you can either slingshot your armored buddies and enemies, or you could go up and rescue them if they're hurt and kind of in danger. It isn't common to have a support armor unit, but as bulky as they are, they can do a good job of both supporting and baiting enemies. So your weapon doesn't really matter all that much, but the new year weapons are probably the best for supports due to their drive effect. Other than that, you know, slaying, silver, whatever. Reposition is the most important part of the build. Uh, guard is a great B slot choice because it will allow the unit to bait without giving the enemy a free cooldown charge. The C slot is a good place for buffs like ward and goat armors, unless of course this is where you want to put armor march. If you do want the buff, then armor boots is a good seal for, for that build. And the last unit we'll discuss is Valentine's Elliewood. So again, the weapon choice here is super nitpicky and his base weapon is fine. But this will help him to buff up his allies if he does engage. Moonbows are a special choice just because he doesn't really have that high defensive resistance. He's got like good mixed defenses, but not really enough to boost his damage by that much. So we'll just go with Moonbow. Uh, like I mentioned, we're going to give him guard. It'll help Elliewood tank without letting them get special charges. And we'll keep his fire boost, but... That can honestly be switched out. So that's all for this little guide. Uh, if you're hoping to build up an armor team or maybe just an armor unit to add to your arena team, I hope some of this was helpful for you. As always, this isn't the end-all be-all of armor skill build theory crafting. Uh, it's just some suggestions that I've thrown together based on my time in the game and my experience with some of these skills. So once again, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a little something. And most importantly, I hope I see you again in the next video. Bye, guys.